Hi, Sue Wilson here. I've got a card today for you that has a lovely contrast between the uh, rose creations in a new style that we've done and some of the filigree work on the dies. So let me introduce you to the dies that we're going to be using. First up here I have from the California collection the Beverly Hills set and this one has a lot of beautiful detail that will show up on our card. The next set is the Hollywood out of the California collection. Another really detailed die, absolutely beautiful when it's cut and we're going to be using it in the background. And then I'm going to also be using our decorative frame set B as well as our decorative set A frames. Okay. The stamp sentiment on the card today is part of our Fanciful Phrases uh, stamp set from Creative Expressions 2. Now let's get started with the very background and for this I'm going to be using the Tied Together Embossing Folder by Couture Creations. This, I have to admit, is one of my favorite 5x7 folders and I've used it quite a bit and I think you'll love it too. So to do this we're going to do a, a faux letterpress technique. Um, I'm going to use some taupe colored card and my antique linen distress ink. So to do this technique, what you need to do is find the side of your folder you want to use, and I'm going to be using the positive side, which is uh, marked with their uh, logo on it, and just take your ink pad direct to the folder and rub it over it. You can even do a little bit of a, a tapping if you prefer, and just ink that all up. Now this is kind of a tone on tone look, but I've got a really nice juicy pad so it should show up well for us. So let's get this situated. I'm going to put the cardstock in the bottom part of my folder here. And then fold that over carefully. I'm going to cover it with my tan mat and the white uh, Creative Expressions adapter plate. And we'll run it through the grand caliber. This process will transfer the ink from the folder onto the floor of the embossed design. It's really pretty. You can see how well that's transferred. Gives it a really unique effect because the design does not have ink on it at all, just the bottom part of that. Now before you go any further, what you need to do though is take your grime boss and wipe your embossing folder clean so that the next time you use it, you won't transfer that ink. And let's just use a little bit of kitchen roll and get it nice and dry. You can set that to the side. Just make sure that our background is dry as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put this onto the background of my card. Let's just, um, let's use some tape for this. We'll just use some double-sided tape, and pop it into place, and then we'll continue on from there. So I've matted and layered a few um, colors already. I've gone with kind of a, a taupe and a, like a purplish eggplant color here, aubergine. Sorry, the American came out there for a second. So set that to the side. Now, what I've gone ahead and done is I've cut the die from the Beverly Hills collection using the inner frame, giving the decorative look on the lavender card, but I want a backing of the taupe behind it. So we're gonna glue those two pieces together. So let me just get some Cosmic Shimmer glue and put some around the edge here. And one of the things that when you uh, are cutting frames and you're doing it out of two different colors and two different pieces of card, you can't actually line them up perfectly straight unless you cut them together. So by putting the, um, the glue and getting them lined up perfectly, we should be able to cut the exact frame out of the center of those. Let me just get these on here nice and straight. Give that a second to secure. In fact, I'm going to let that glue just dry for a second before I run it through. Um, so in the meantime, what I'll do is take my background piece here, and I've already cut one of the other dies, and we're going to be using this in a, um, a different direction, in kind of a vertical direction on the card. I've put a little bit of mounting foam on the back, and we will just center that right in the middle, ready for this piece to go on top of that. So let's get our cutting plates. 
And I'm going to use the basic set frame die, this size here, just to cut a perfect uh, frame out of the center of that. Let me tape that into place where I want it. And we can run that through. Now I've got two pieces of card together, so let's see, it should do it one pass, but I think what I'll do is go through the machine and then back. Sometimes that gives it just an extra little bit of edge. That's done the trick. There we go. So you can see how it's cut perfectly around the same shape, so I don't have to worry about doing two pieces and lining them up together. So now we'll add a tiny bit of mounting foam to the back of this, just to raise it up. I like having a bit of dimension on my cards. I think it really does add a little bit extra. That should be fine. And we're going to put this one horizontally across that. So what you'll see is the pretty detail poking out top and bottom there, which I really, really like. So next, I'm going to make a flower. And I've cut um, one, two, three, four, five, six of these already out of the Rose Creations. And let me just show you what we're going to do with these. We are going to give them a good spritzing on our craft mat. Get them all wet. And then we're going to do a little bit of crunching. And just fold it all up. And I try to poke my thumb into the center and kind of fold them upward around that. You can do this sort of flower with anywhere from four to, say, seven or eight of these if you want it to be a little fuller. Um, you just need to have a brad that will accommodate that to many if you're going to do a, a layer a flower that's got more in it. So I've just got a little um, brad here I'm going to put through the center, and I've poked little holes in them. And I'm going to offset each one of them ever so slightly as I put them onto the brad. And that, that water on there where we spritzed it has broken down the fibers a bit so the paper is really nice and pliable for you. There we go. Okay, let's close the legs on that. And let's form our flower now. So what you're going to do is the same exact motion, one layer at a time, bring it up, Squish it around. Work the next one up. Just give it a gentle push towards the center. Work to the third layer. Same process. Fourth layer. So each one of these is becoming scrunched up around the center more and more. Here's the fifth layer. And finally, the last one, I usually just kind of give it a little bit of a crunching as I go around it just to make sure it's got a little bit of movement to it. And then you can just sort of open it back up where you want it and play with it and form it. I like to squish the center down a little bit. It gives that very carnation look to your flower. And then it will dry and stay perfectly in place like that. I think it's a beautiful flower for your cards. So I've gone ahead and made a few ahead of time with some of the smaller ones. So we will start assembling our card. Um, I've got some lighter purple ones, and I'll just put them on with glue dots, and we'll do kind of a uh, cascade method, which I always think is so pretty on cards. And we'll put a couple here, some on top of the frame. And let's go down on this side for one of them. Yeah, let's put some light ones on there like that. I've also done a messy bow out of mauve scene binding. So we'll go ahead and put that on. 
And I'm going to seat that right down on the bottom here. And a couple more little flowers. Let's finish with a dark purple one. Oops, there it is. Pesky little glue dots get stuck to your finger sometimes. And this one's still a little damp, but I think, I think we can get it to stick with the glue dot. Let's see. Put that right over our bow. And I did a sentiment. Already stamped that and cut it out with the decorative frames. We'll put that into the center of our card. And it will just be peeking out in the middle there. And I'll just finish with a little bit of a pearl swirl. And I've cut these from a larger swirl, which is what I think is really fun to do. So you can use the bits and pieces on different cards. And you just need to peel it gently off the acetate, working your way down a little bit. Put one of them here. That's good. And I've got one more. Peel this one back. And we will gently lay this one up in this corner. Looks good. Tuck that underneath. There you go. Got a beautiful card that you can use for any occasion. This one just happens to be for a friend. Hope you've enjoyed this one.